What is the common denominator between this building, this hairstyle and this fabric? Don't they remind you of geometrical shapes? The New York Times was recently quoted recurring patterns, interest in designs pulls science closer to art and if African traditional art was simply applied mathematics. Let's just start. Welcome to African Art Whispers and today we are going to explore the concept of fractals in different contexts. This will be of course followed by our usual facts. But before we go any further, let's just define what a fractal is. A fractal is a pattern that repeats itself on different scales. It uses self-similarities in such a way that one part is similar to the whole. Fractiles are very common in the nature. We find them on blood vessels, chain of mountains, clouds, pineapple, and so on. Here we have the image of a fern. If we zoom into the leaf, we can see that it still looks like the whole fern. And if we zoom a bit closer, it still looks like the whole fern. Beautifully, images of fractiles can also be found on our desk top but they are generated by sophisticated software we know that in western civilization fractiles or geometrical forms are used as a way of decoration but in more ancient civilization like the african one it is more commonly used as a way to reflect cultural social or religious beliefs African fractiles in textile, we have the case of the Kuba cloth, also known as Boshang, and here are some modern applications with those cushions. We know that the pattern has been the source of inspiration of major artists such as Henri Matisse, and here is the evidence with this painting still life on a blue table. Cloth. The original Kuba cloth is from the Democratic Republic of Congo and it is made out of palm leaf fibers. It is unique because of the complexity of its design. It uses semi-symmetry which is achieved by the juxtaposition of different geometrical shapes and by the control variation in shapes, scales, colors and texture. The similarities in variation means that we are able to counterbalance the differences in the images. Here is a graphic example of the Kuba cloth. If we look at the image one, it looks very similar. But when we move on to the third image, we notice that there are actually four to five different shapes used to give this impression of similarity. This fabric has been the subject of various mathematical studies because of its use of semi-symmetry and the two-dimensional aspect of the design. It has shown the extent to which the Kubaklov technique have been able to explore all possibilities of repeated variation of border patterns. So let's just look a bit deeper. Here is what we call a freezer patterns, which is a pattern that repeats itself in straight line, vertically or horizontally. If we flip it to the other side, we create a symmetry. And a set of symmetry of freezer pattern is called a freezer group. Mathematical studies have been able to classify up to seven categories of freezer group, as you can see here. Now, back into our example, we should be able to identify three mathematical applications of those freezer rules. The first one is the translation, which technically will be called a hop. The second one is a translation and a glad reverse symmetry, which will be called a step. And the last one is a reverse translation, which will be called a reverse. African fractals in hairstyles 
African civilization have been using fractals to create beautiful and intricate hairstyles for centuries, patiently braiding iteration of the same form. Yes, fractals can be found on Kenro, which are actually designed on the scalp, made by parting hair, lengthwise, crosswise into curves. This has been the subject of various mathematical studies and it has revealed that the concept used is called collage mosaic or tessellation. The principle is a repetition of patterns of figures to cover one surface without gap or overlap. As you can see here, interviews with Afro hairstylists have revealed that the concept is widely used in the community and applied to their creativity. Collage can be formed by a combination of translation, rotation or repetitive image of a fundamental shape. Let's just see how this applies to a few hairstyles. The first one is the box braids. The shape used is rectangular and the patterns will be similar to the one of the brick wall. We start at the nape of the neck and increase successively at each level, as you can see here. The second example is triangular braids. The triangles are equilateral, which means that each side has the same length. The hair inside the triangle are drawn at the intersection of the sectors of the triangle. Different categories of fractiles are identified in hairstyle. The first one is adaptive scaling, where the curvature of the braids is adapted to the individual contour of the head, as you can see here. And the second category is the recursive style, where we work on the principle of infinity. And this is the case here with the Koroba hairstyle. Fractiles in architecture in the northern part of Cameroon, the principle of fractiles is used to build houses. In Kotoko traditional village, each complex is built by adding a rectangular enclosure to the pre-existing one, and the result is a complex structure with rectangle within rectangle, as you can see here on the aerial picture. It can also be generated by computers and this is the result. These structures allow family to live in closer cluster and in Kotoko traditional village, the rectangle is synonym to riot. This means that each time you enter a smaller rectangle, you are required to be more polite. And by the time you enter the smallest rectangle, you are shoeless and able to speak. Now on to our usual facts. From traditional to trendy, zoom on to the Ndembele pattern from South Africa. She celebrated her 85th birthday last year year and her name is Esther Malangu. She's behind the internationalization of the South African pattern and it is closely connected to the ancient tradition of decorating houses in rich of passage for boys, as you can see here. Esther worked got noticed in 1989 during an international exhibition in Paris called Les Magiciens de la Terre and since she's been working with many global brands. In 1997, her work was used to decorate the tales of British Airways Thane and more recently, the same technique was used for the Fiat 500. In 2016, her collaboration was extended with BMW where she worked on the transformation of the interior design of the Series 7. Esther is also the first African artist to have her work displayed on the Rolls-Royce paddock. 
Ethnomathematics is a term that appeared in 1977. It was introduced by a Brazilian educator and mathematician called D'Abrazio. It is the study of the relationship between culture and mathematics, and it is mostly applied to culture with limited written expression. We know that ethnomathematics is behind the understanding of the different finger counting techniques used to introduce basic mathematical concepts such as addition, subtraction, and so on in different cultures. More and more educators and mathematicians are pushing to have African traditional art used to introduce geometrical concepts such as symmetry, rotation, freezer pattern, and so on. The main argument is that it has the advantage of not pushing math externally, but rather use concepts that are present in the culture to translate them into mathematics that are taught in school. This is the end of our video. I hope you have enjoyed it and that you have learned a lot of new things. We see you next time, but in the meantime, take care and stay safe.